I know people may have a problem with their iPhone and sharing the internet using hotspots, so I'll give you some tips on how to fix some of them. So I'm Lucas from Apple Fox and let's just begin. <laughs> So I personally encounter a problem when connecting my laptop running Windows 10 to my iPhone in order to get the internet from it. I of course turn on the share internet feature and all of the things you should do, but even though the laptop noticed the network, it could not connect to it. Then what I did was that I simply connected my iPhone to it using the lightning to USB cable and it got recognized and started to work. Which was kind of simple I guess, but it doesn't always have to be the solution to every problem. But for me it worked and even then after like disconnecting the iPhone from uh, the cable from the computer, then the Wi-Fi still managed to work and I didn't have to do it again. It was like the first thing I had to do like at first and then it worked normally. You probably also know that there are a couple of ways to share internet. You can see all of them right in the personal hotspot section in the settings. So using Wi-Fi, the regular and most common way, but also using Bluetooth, that is least convenient if you ask me because you have to pair like these two devices together and also you can use uh, the method using the usb cable so definitely try connecting the devices with a cable to see what happens at least i will go in deep and talk about every of these methods so keep watching if you still have a problem with the personal hotspot it could be happening because your carrier does not support it it's not that common nowadays because pretty much every carrier now supports it, but it's not the rule, like they do not have to. You can check it out on Apple's support page, link is in the description. You can only click it after you click on the like button, otherwise it won't work. <laughs> but anyways, here you can see that a huge majority supports it. But if you, for example, use Lucky Mobile in Canada, they do not support iPhone personal hotspot, even though they have eSIM support as well as LTE, but for some reason you are not allowed to share your internet to a different device. You should also keep in mind that iPhone or any phone in general is not designed to be used as a Wi-Fi router or as a replacement for it. Yes, it's capable of doing that to a degree, but don't overuse it since it could cause some problems like overheating, excessive battery drain and so on, so only use this feature when you really need to. If you have a problem of frequent disconnecting, then it depends a little bit more on the device that you're trying to connect to your iPhone. Normally when connecting Apple devices together, like working in the Apple ecosystem, it works better and seamlessly pretty much, but it could be a little bit more problematic with other devices. But general things that are recommended include installing any available carrier updates, you can do it and search for them right in the settings, general section, then about, and you should be able to see any available updates. If there aren't any available, then you will not see anything. Then, of course, restart both of these devices, change the name of your iPhone for some reason that this should work. Like, this advice is from Apple Community Specialist, and it's marked as helpful on Apple's page, so apparently it should do something, right? But in order to change the name of your iPhone, again, go to your settings, then general and about, and you should be able to change the name of it. So the network that gets or is emitted from the iPhone carries the name of the iPhone. So that's why you need to change the name. That will make the name of the network change as well. And you will know at least what to look for in the other device when trying to connect. Then you should consider resetting network settings, but like all the time I have to tell you that this will also erase all of your saved Wi-Fi passwords, so it's not like you walk into your home and it will connect automatically. All of the remembered passwords are going to be erased and removed, so you will have to type in everything once again. The same goes from VPN and APN, so everything's going to be lost pretty much. So it depends on how bad the situation is, and if it's really bad, you should probably also reset all of the settings, and this could also, in theory, get the job done. So these were the common tips that you get, even though I don't think it will solve all of your problems with your hotspot. 
it may be useful for at least some of them. But now, just like I promised, I will explain a little bit more about the individual methods of connecting. Because if one doesn't work, you can always try the different one. And there, there's a lot more room to play with. And there are more opportunities and options. So it's definitely a good idea to know about it. So the first is, of course, using the Wi-Fi. This is the most popular way. So um, you can access it right from the control center if you go like this and force press on this huge platter with Wi-Fi. You can see we have personal hotspot. You can just click on it to make it discoverable. And you can also go, go ahead and go to the settings, cellular, or you will already see the personal hotspot there. So tap on it and make sure to check allow others to join. Also, you can remove the Wi-Fi password or set anything as you want for it. Once you are connected, then you will see a blue bar on top of the iPhone if you have the older design. And with the notch iPhones, with the iPhone X design, you will see a blue background behind the time or uh, this logo right there. So you should be able to see that whenever any other device is connected to your iPhone. Now, the second method is using Bluetooth, and this is a little bit more tricky. I don't really like this a lot, but you can also pair your devices together. So you can go to settings and make sure to allow others to join. This is the same condition as well. And then go to settings and Bluetooth and make sure that it is on. Now you have to keep the screen open and you need to just simply connect these devices together. So on the Mac, for example, you will go to your Bluetooth section and you make sure it is on again. You simply pair it and connect it together. And then if you move on to your networks, network settings in system preferences, you should be able to see the Bluetooth network from your iPhone. So I don't really like it, like I said, but this is another way how you can use it. You can again get use of this. Uh, even though you have a Windows PC, but it works a little bit differently. You have to navigate to devices and printers uh, on your Windows computer. And there you should be able to see your iPhone and make sure to connect to it using access point. You should be able to see it without any problem. And if you cannot do it, like if you have some problem, Again, the same things like restart your device, turn your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on and off again and stuff like this all the time. This doesn't really change. You should always at first try this out, but you can get it to work without any problem, usually. And the third option, which is like my second favorite, is to use the USB cable. Uh, they always want to make sure that you have the latest iTunes installed and all of that. And you simply connect your iPhone to your computer with the USB to lightning cable. And you just simply set it up the same way you go to your system preferences and network. And there you should be able to see the actual site, the actual network from your iPhone. So this should be simple as well. When it comes to using Windows and trying to connect using the, the USB cable, again, you should need to, uh, you should have the latest version of iTunes and you can connect uh, the uh, iPhone to your computer now and make sure to click on trust the device and you can also you have to click on trust the computer on the iPhone then you have to make sure that the uh, computer can recognize that you are connected uh, make sure to open up iTunes and you should be able to see your iPhone right there. And then you simply go to your network settings on the Windows and try to connect it using there. You have to be a little bit more um, knowledgeable, I would say. But this is pretty much a basic knowledge, so you should be able to get it working. And this was pretty much it. I hopefully mentioned all of the things I wanted to. If you enjoyed this video or at least found some value in it, I would be really glad if you subscribed or if you clicked on the like button, that would really help out the channel. So thanks a lot for your support and see you guys later in the next video.